We've talked about being in a real estate recession. And by real estate recession, we don't necessarily mean a consumer recession where prices have gone down, but a transaction recession where the number of transactions have gone down. Welcome everybody to Agent Investor, another live stream, another podcast episode, more content for agents to get off that real estate roller coaster. Um, now is the time more than ever to invest in real estate. 2023 has been a really tough year for real estate agents. I should know I'm a broker owner of over 400 real estate agents at my company and transactions are down. Um, over the past couple months, we've talked about being in a real estate recession. And by real estate recession, we don't necessarily mean a consumer recession where prices have gone down, but a transaction recession where the number of transactions have gone down. Uh, most brokerages, most agents this year are down 20 or 30 percent in their sales numbers. Add on to the fact that we've got this buyer commission lawsuit that has been plaguing the industry and could, and I want to highlight the word could, drastically change how buyer agents get paid. Now is the time more than ever to increase your investing income. If you're listening to this, think about how it would feel come January 1st, every single year for you to have six figures of passive income, $100,000 of passive income coming in, so that regardless of how many transactions that you did per year, you would always be safe and secure and your family would be safe and secure. Guys, I love transactions more than anybody. My company fixes and flips a ton of houses. We do a ton of transactions in the brokerage side. I love transactions. I love having a transactional business. But more so than that, I love the ability to have guaranteed income coming in every single month. So every single week, we provide you guys with free content on how to get off the real estate roller coaster and not quit sales, right? But augment your sales, have another stream of revenue coming in from investing that's gonna allow you to not necessarily have to worry about the ups and downs of the market. As agents, we think about that a lot, right? We talk about that a lot. What's next year gonna be like? Are the transactions still gonna be down? What's going on with this buyer commission thing? And at the end of the day, when you have enough passive income from investing, not that you don't care, but it's not as relevant, right? So everything that we do, and we provide people with free content each and every week through a couple of different sources, and I want to mention them quickly. Um, number one, by the Agent Investor Podcast. Some of you are listening to this now through a podcast. Some of you are on the live stream. Podcasting is the easiest way to get educated about being an agent investor, right? There's nobody, like you can tell me, hey, maybe I can't come to an in-person event. You can tell me that I can't take a day off from work. You can tell me that you don't have time to do this or do that. And some of those comments may be valid. But what you can't do, you can't tell me that you don't have an hour a week to listen to a podcast. You can't tell me that you're not in your car for an hour a week or that you're not cleaning your house or that you're not at the gym or that you're not out on a walk or that you're not doing something where, you know, doing your dishes where you can put the podcast in, right? www.agentinvestorpodcast.com. And don't just listen to one episode. Go back in time. Continue to listen to all of them as you can. Right, Most people can listen to two or three podcasts per week. It's the easiest way to get educated. And I said this, I was on a coaching call um, the other day with a couple of agents that are in the inner circle. And I said, one of the best things that you can do right now is to build your education base by listening to a ton of podcast episodes. Right, So, so just listen to as many as you can, put it on in your car, putting it on when you're walking around. You know, um, and the second thing is make sure you're in our Facebook group. You can do that by going to www.agentinvestor.com. I put a lot of posts. I put a lot of great material. I put resources. I put calculators. I put things that agent investors need in the Facebook group. Joining the Facebook group is completely free. There is no reason if you're listening to this right now that you shouldn't be in that Facebook group. You can do that by going to www.agentinvestor.com. 
And lastly, once a month, we have we host in-person events throughout New England. We have started a new thing where we're doing two locations per month. Um, we I am recording this in November 2023. In November 2023, we're going to be in Boston and Springfield, Mass., which is really close to Connecticut. We are going to rotate those events on a on a monthly basis. If you ever want to see, you know, you could be listening to this, you know, in December, January, whatever month, you know, later later on. If you ever want to see what events we have coming up. Just go to www.agentinvestorevent.com and it will take you to a one page jot form that will list the locations, how to register, and what the topic is for that month. Okay. Um, so, those are the three free resources. We've also got the Agent Investor Inner Circle Coaching Program for people that want more individual help. If you're thinking that, hey, I've listened to a bunch of podcasts or I've listened to some, of your live streams, or maybe I've followed you on Facebook and I want more information. I want more individualized, personalized help. My last thing I want to mention really quickly before we jump into the topic for today is just to make sure that you book a call with me at www.agentinvestorinnercircle.com. When you book the call with me, we're going to talk about your investing goals. We're going to talk about where you want to be three, five, 10 years into the future. On the call, we're going to create a plan of what you need to do. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the benefits are of joining the inner circle, how to get in. And if it's a fit, it's a fit. And if it's not, you know, I want to continue to at least educate you completely for free. Because now, like I said in the beginning, now more than ever, agents need to invest because of all of the uncertainty with what is going on with commission income right now. With that being said, I want to jump into today's episode. Today's ep episode is about the last 10 case studies of the partner deals that we've done with agents. Um, so we rolled out this, this partner program maybe six months ago, eight months ago, and we have been averaging two to three agent investor partner deals per month, where an agent goes out, they find a great flip opportunity, a great quick turn flip opportunity. They bring it to us. We go on the appointment with them. We put up all the money. We do all the construction, and then we split the profits with agents 50-50. Now, while we just rolled out this program six months ago, six to eight months ago, we did this a little bit for agents at our brokerage here and there. And we've had deals where we've split profits of over $200,000 with people that are in our inner circle, with people that we work with. Now, I've already done a podcast, and I've also live streamed, and I've posted a bunch, and I've emailed a bunch about how the partner program works. I want to spend just two minutes covering the high level of that, just in case there's somebody who's on here who isn't familiar with the partner program and who needs to hear this. And then I'm going to jump in to the last 10 transactions that we've done with agent partners. I'm going to talk specifically where the properties are located, what the numbers look like, how the agent found the deal, how the agent found us. Because what I want to do in this episode is I want people to understand that there's a variety of different ways to find deals, a variety of different types of deals that we do. And more than anything else, I want you to you guys to all keep your eyes and ears open for these kind of deals, because I think you're going to be surprised in some of these cases how these agents found these deals. Um, if you, I'm sure most of you have heard, um, you know, the, the, the psychological thing in your brain that changes when you get a new car. And... Um, my wife gave me, my wife had a, a white Honda Odyssey minivan. We have four kids. And um, I bought her a new minivan a couple of years ago. I got, I got her a um, Nissan. Now I'm going to screw up the, the, the brand, but I got her a Nissan. Um, and, and so I took the Honda Odyssey because, again, we got four kids. You know, we need the space. So I took this white Honda Odyssey, this kind of like car that I've never seen on the road before. All of a sudden, now... Every single day I see a Honda Odyssey, you know, and not only do I see Honda Odysseys, a lot of times I see white Honda Odysseys. This is the same type of thing when we're talking about the partner deals, how agents find these partner deals. In many, many cases, it's not about going out and doing things that you're not normally doing. It's about just keeping your eyes and ears open. And you're going to see that with these 10 case studies that I talk about. But again, before I talk about the case studies, I want to talk just very high level about how the partner 
you know, program works. So the partner program is really simple. It's a way for agents to fix and flip homes um, anywhere in the United States, um, even if they don't have the money and even if they don't have any construction expertise. One of the reasons that this program was created is because that was exactly me going back to 2008 when I did my first investing deal. I knew how to find deals. I just didn't have any money and I didn't have any construction expertise. So my two partners, who I'm still partners with today, put up the money, managed the construction, and that formed the basis of our partnership that's still going strong, whatever it is, you know, um, 15 years later. So with that being said, agents come across great investing opportunities all the time. We're going to talk about how agents find investing opportunities in a second. But agents come across these deals all the time. And in many cases, they don't do the deals either because they don't have the money they don't have the construction expertise, a combination of the both, or maybe they're just nervous to doing a deal, right? So there's a lot of reasons why agents don't flip as many houses as they maybe could or should, um, but we've completely removed all of those barriers by you know, having this partner program. So some people have said to me, this sounds too good to be true, and maybe it kind of does sound that way because it is a really good offering, but all an agent needs to do is bring us an off-market deal. We'll go out there, we'll make an offer on the property, and if we come to a deal, we will put up the money, do the construction, and split the profits 50-50. Now, while that all may sound really, really good, and it is really, really good, uh, as we kind of all know, if most of us think about like how many off-market deals we come across on a monthly basis, it's not like we have 50 to 100 of these coming across our plate. So most of the agents that we work with, that we've worked with in the six months, you know, we've done either just one deal with them or a couple deals with them. We have a couple agents that do a lot of marketing. So maybe we do more deals with those type of agents. But while the offering is really good, this is not something that you necessarily are going to do 50 deals a year with us. You know, most agents will do between one to five deals per year, depending on how active you want to get. But really, again, all that the agent needs to do is keep their eyes and their ears open, and you know they come across these opportunities. Um, the average profit on these deals so far is about eighty thousand dollars, which means that on average, if you give us a deal, we put up the money, we do the construction, on average, you're going to get a check for forty thousand dollars when the deal is done. Now, results obviously vary greatly. Right, I mentioned a deal where we 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 split an over two hundred thousand dollar profit um, with a couple of agents, and we've also done deals where we've only split thirty five thousand. Um, so there's a lot of variables to the profit that you know gets made on these partner deals. I will say this: we typically have a pretty good idea of what that profit is going to be before the deal even gets done, and we actually make an agent signing agreement with us to and we put in there what we believe the profit's going to be, right? Because we know the purchase price. We know what the renovation budget is going to be to a pretty good accuracy. And then the only variable there that really we can't fully control is what that property is going to sell for. But the great thing about that document and the great thing about agents being in contract with us with that document is that we know kind of like in the end, if the property sells for a lot more than what we projected, you know, which happens from time to time, great. Um, you know, all both of us make more money. And if it sells for a little bit less, well, you know, none of us are really truthfully, you know, that surprised at the profit being a little bit less. But I would say the vast majority of the profits end, end up ranging from fifty to $100,000. Not too many outliers above or below. Of course, I highlight one where we split $200,000. That's not the norm, newsflash. Wish it was. It's just not. Um, you know, and we'll do ones that will end up working out a little bit worse than we thought. Again, not the norm, but it does happen. But no matter what, when an agent brings us a deal, splits the profits with us 50 50, we almost know for a fact that there's no way they could have made more money from that lead. Meaning, like if they went out, they listed that house, they would make far less meaning that you know if they try to wholesale the deal, they'd make far less. So it's still the best option regardless of exactly how well the deal does. Um, and the process is really simple. I'm only going to mention it for one more minute. But all that we need when a seller, when an agent comes across 
an off-market deal. We want to be notified. If at all possible, we want to go out on the appointment with the agent. We want to help them negotiate. You know, I have five guys on the road every single day looking for these deals, able to help close these deals. Um, and, and we hope to do as many deals like that as possible. You know, we go out on the appointment with people and then we try to get them closed. Once they get closed, we enter into a contract with the agent, you know, basically on how the partnership works, the 50-50 split, all of the details. Then, of course, we buy the property. We manage the renovation. The agent does not need to be involved in the renovation whatsoever. Um, if agents want to be updated on the progress of the project, of course, we can update them. And then we just list it, we sell it, and they get paid. I wish I could make it more complicated than that. And of course, there could be many more questions about the partnership program. But this episode isn't about the partnership program. It's about the case studies. If you're interested in learning more specifically about the partnership program, feel free to go back in time to a prior episode that will go into more detail about the program itself. But honestly, you don't need to know much else other than anytime you come across a seller who wants to sell their property before the property is in the MLS, or when you hear about somebody that wants to sell to an investor, just reach out to me directly and we'll kind of take it from there. So with that being said, I want to go through the last 10 deals that we've done in no particular order. Okay. I want to, I want to just go through these as quickly as I can and give you guys, you know, an understanding of like how people found out about the program, you know, you know, specifically where the property is located, um, what the deal kind of looks like and how the, how the agent found these deals. Okay. So I'm literally going through the last 10 that we've done. In no way is this reflective of how all of the deals are going to look like. I picked 10 because that's a big enough sample size to have this discussion today. It's a big enough sample size to kind of give you guys an idea of how things are found, um, how we work, et cetera. But there will be many more types of transactions that are out there. Again, all you really need to worry about is to keep your eyes and ears open for these kinds of deals and to let me know when you have one. But without further ado, I'm just going to go through one by one. So first one I want to talk about, a uh, person's name, his name is Cam. Some of you who are in my market probably know the guy. I'm not going to give anyone's last name just to kind of keep some sort of like, you know, privacy there. But um, And I do also want to mention that all of these deals are located in either Massachusetts or New Hampshire. I mentioned in the beginning, we can do deals anywhere. So, I mean, anywhere across the United States, we can do a deal. If you have a deal, bring it to us. We'll talk through how we can get that deal done. Okay, so bring the deal, send the deal, et cetera. Um, but most of these are in Massachusetts and New Hampshire, mainly because those are where my contacts are. I mean, if you go into the Agent Investor Facebook group, we've crossed, I think, 15,000 members now. We are getting more outside of New England but of course, my base is in New England. You know, I grew up right outside of Boston. My office is right outside of Boston right now. Okay, so first deal, Cam. Um, yeah, he's actually not even a real estate agent yet. He's actually a wholesaler. Um, the property is located in Danvers. We just closed on the deal. So Cam met us through our events. So he's been coming to our events now. I'm going to guess for probably a little bit over a year, somewhere kind of in that vicinity over a year. Um, and he obtained this deal through an attorney, okay, which is one example of ways that people can get deals. You know, some agents who are listening to this probably already get fed deals by attorneys, but attorneys, of course, come across a lot of issues, right? They come across bankruptcies. They come across probate. Right when someone passes away, they come across auctions, foreclosures. Right, people are behind on their mortgage. They come across divorces. Right, so building attorney relationships can be a good way to get deals, and that is how this deal was found. This attorney is somebody that Cam knows, friend. Um, sent Cam the deal. We went out on the appointment. We analyzed the deal. We kind of knew, so he actually had a relationship with the seller. We kind of knew ahead of time what they were going to be willing to take. It was a number that worked for us. And long story short, we bought that deal. Okay, so this person 
is not even an agent, wants to be an agent, will become an agent, uh, but they're not yet an agent. So I guess that brings up another point. This isn't just open up to agents, although most of my audience are agents. I think that almost everything we teach on isn't just for agents, right? Like everything that we teach on can be applied for people that are agents or not agents, okay? So deal number two that I want to talk about is um, 302 High Street in Andover. And I am going to mention this person's full name because I know they won't care. He's a friend of mine, Jason Goldfarb and Mike Weatherby. They're two agents that have been in my brokerage for maybe six years. Two really great guys, two guys that are investors. I'm going to misquote how many houses they flip per year, but I think it's in the 10 to 20 range. They do a lot of investing. They came to our brokerage because they wanted to learn more about investing. Now they're actively out there doing it. So they actively and proactively market for deals. They do things like mailers. They do things like pay-per-click. And they are actually actively out there spending money in order to get deals. So you might wonder on this deal, I'm going to give you the address again, 302 High Street in Andover. You might wonder, like, why would somebody who's already an agent investor partner with you? And the reason is really simple. There can actually be a lot of different reasons, but there's a few things to think about on why people who are active already partner with us. One of them is just deal flow. So our team has the ability to process a ton of deals. In terms of the construction side, we're definitely like a factory. We can do a ton of these. And in a lot of cases, when agents are out there proactively looking and marketing for deals, everybody has like a cap on how many they can do. For some people, they can manage one at a time. For some people, they can manage two. But there's usually some limit for most agent investors as to how many of these flips they can do at a time. In their case, they kind of got to that limit and they said, hey, like, you know, if you guys want to partner, we can partner. It was also a little bit bigger of a renovation. So that's another factor as to sometimes why people might want to um, partner with us. You know, we we don't care whether the deal is an easy deal to do construction wise or a big deal. Um, We're happy to take on any types of deals. It doesn't really matter. So sometimes agents will pick and choose. They'll say, oh, let me do this really easy deal on the construction side. And let me partner with Tom and his team on this other deal where the construction might be a little bit more heavily involved, okay? Another reason why agent investors partner with us in general, even if they're already investors, are our locations, okay? So, and I'm just going to throw out, you know, I know there are listeners here from all over the country, but you can understand being an agent that you may want to do flip deals or investing deals within, call it a 10-mile radius of where you live. You might only have contractors there. We will do these deals nationwide. Of course, we would prefer them in New England, but you know we'll do them you know anywhere. So send us your deals. Um, we'll do them anywhere, and that can be another reason why people partner with us. The other reason why they partner with us, and this is just like an interesting tidbit, they first tried to wholesale this deal before partnering with us because their thought process was, if I can wholesale the deal, make the same as if I was going to partner with you, then why wouldn't I get the money faster? And I don't know if I fully agree with that logic. There's a lot to kind of be said there. But they put this property out there. They tried to wholesale it. Buyer came in, made them an offer, and backed out. Now, what I always say to people, and I believe this is true, is like our company is going to be the highest – guaranteed offer. There are a lot of newbie investors that will go out there, they'll put offers on properties, and then they don't always come through. So we're always going to be a really high guaranteed offer. Yes, maybe someone will pay more that's a newbie, but yes, that person is also more likely to back out. Okay. All right. So that's deal number two. And again, they found that deal through marketing. Deal number three, Um, I will not mention this person's name at all. Uh, Reason being is that they want privacy. They've actually mentioned this to me a couple of times. And I I should say that too. You know, we are, of course, a brokerage. Uh, We have, we run a brokerage. We have 400 agents. Um, You know, we're fairly well known in New England. And 
there are people who work for other brokerages that may not want their broker owner to know that they're working with us. We respect that. Um, I have no issue with that. I have no issue keeping anything private if somebody wants me to. Um, you know, of course, would I love to scream from the rooftops every single time we do a deal with somebody? Yes. But of course, I fully respect um, somebody not wanting their, their information to be out there. So all I'm going to say about this deal is, is this property was a single family on the North Shore that this agent got through their sphere of influence. It was a traditional listing appointment that they were going on. And in fact, they actually intended to list this property until they found out that there was a septic fail. So when a septic fails, um, you know, you can't get traditional financing. And typically in our market, that means an investor needs to buy it. Interestingly enough, this agent brought us in to make an offer, I believe in December. The seller rejected our offer, searched around for a while to find a better, higher offer, and four months later came back and ended up selling the property to us. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago that we're always going to be the highest guaranteed offer. And in a lot of cases, you may have a client who says, no, I'm not taking that cash offer. And if they do sell to an investor, they're likely going to sell to us because they're likely not going to be able to go out there and find a better offer. So this deal was a, a pretty good deal in a nice town um, north of Boston. Um, and again, you know, I'm going to respect the agent's privacy just to say that they work for another brokerage. That's totally cool. We respect that. And, and they found this deal through their sphere of influence. I do want to mention how we met that agent. And again, you know, I want to just go through that on all of these is that this agent came to our event at this point, first event, maybe almost 18 months ago, almost 18 months ago and six months after they came to our first event is when they brought us this deal. Okay. This is a, somebody that's in the inner circle program. So that's deal number three. Deal number four, I love this deal. I love this deal so much because it, it just illustrates so many points that I always make um, about why agents need to invest, how agents can find deals, et cetera. So we had this agent, Henry Nugent. Um, he joined our brokerage maybe a year ago. And a few months after, he, you know, he said to me, hey, I'm going to find you an investment deal. I said, cool, let me know when you have something. And so Henry joined our brokerage shortly after coming to an event of ours. It reached out to me. He goes, oh, I was at a continuing education event. And I talked to another agent who has what I think might be a good deal. Do you guys want to go out and take a look? Long story short, we went out, you know, the next day or the day after, um, worked with that other agent. Okay, so this is an important point. You, everyone who's on this call, you've co-broked with so many other agents. You know so many other agents. Um, an off-market deal can be as simple as an agent that you know that has a property for sale that we can go and take a take a, we can go out and take a look at. So if you think about this, you know, I want to call it like a win-win-win-win. And this was, by the way, 15 Merriam Ave in Quincy. 15 Merriam. And I'm only saying the address. And the name of the person, because I know they're not going to mind. Um, so 15 Merriam and Quincy, it was a win, 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 win. Okay. Seller wanted a guaranteed cash sale. We checked that box. Agent who signed that listing agreement wanted to get the seller a guaranteed cash offer. And ideally for them, they would do a deal where they would get both sides of the commission. Okay. So meaning like, that agent made double what they would normally make because they did not have to co-broke that deal, right? Win for us, right? This was a deal that we got that we wouldn't have normally gotten if we didn't have the partnership program. And I should point that out too. Like, you know, as much as like I've had people say, well, this sounds too good to be true. If you kind of think about it from like our company perspective, we have a, a big marketing budget. We go on a lot of appointments per week. We do a lot of deals. These deals are extra for us. Every partner deal that we do, it's pure profit. It was something that we didn't have to market for. We didn't have to spend a lot of time, effort, and energy. It kind of just got brought to us. 
So while it's a great deal for the agent, it's also a great deal for us. But getting back to the win, 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 we won. And then, of course, Henry is now going to split what should be a fifty dollars to $80,000 profit just for showing up at a continuing education event that he had to go to anyways to keep his license and hearing about an investment deal. So as you can see, I've talked about a lot of different ways that agents have gotten deals and they haven't all been the same. Okay. All right. Next deal I want to talk about, 120 Lingstrom Lane in Manchester, New Hampshire. This is an interesting one. This deal was brought to us by Mike Pru. Mike Pru found out about me, found out about our company in 2018 when I was running a seminar. And at the time, my inner circle coaching program cost $60,000. Okay. I've, I've talked about this a lot. The inner circle program that we now basically give to people for next to nothing, I used to charge a bunch of money for. Mike was one of those people that paid a good chunk of money to get into the inner circle program. And about six months ago, Mike brought us this deal, 120 Lindstrom Lane, which crazy as this is, Lindstrom is my mother's maiden name. I am half Swedish and um, Lindstrom is my mother's maiden name. Mike found this deal. Mike found this deal from a wholesaler that he knew. Okay, so a wholesaler knew that Mike was the cash buyer. They brought the deal to Mike. They said, the only caveat we have is we need you to close in 10 days. So the reason Mike brought us this deal is because it needed a quick close. We provided a quick close, 120 Lindstrom Lane. I believe this project is almost complete at the moment. Potentially by the time that you guys are listening to this, um, it could even be on the market. So again, Mike found out about us five years ago. He's been somebody who's been at our brokerage for five years. He's been a top producer. He's been an investor. And again, for him, this, this was all about just getting that 10-day quick close. Now, again, like how did he find the deal? We talked about it. He found it through another wholesaler. So we talked about the fact that like just by having your eyes and ears open sometimes, it can be beneficial. You know, going to networking events, connecting with other wholesalers, connecting with other agents, letting them know that these are the types of deals that you do. Okay. So I did one, two, three, four, five. All right. Next deal up, Hampton, New Hampshire. Guy by the name of Miles um, brought us this deal. And um, Miles has been an agent with our company now for, I think, four years. Works a full-time job, um, doesn't do a lot of real estate, doesn't do a lot of real estate, um, is passively involved as an agent, part-time agent, um, not focused on investing whatsoever. He just knew from being a part of our team, and this is where, you know, I talk about this all the time. You're the average of the five people you spend the most amount of time with. He doesn't do a lot of investing. He doesn't do a lot of transactions because he has a full-time job. But yet, he made a bunch of money just by learning about what we do and being in the right place at the right time. Now, for him, this was his his brother inherited. A, a, did his brother inherit a house? His brothers, I, I think. I think they did. I think his brother's father in law passed away, something like that. And they wanted a cash sale, right? They wanted a cash sale. He knew that we did that. We came out, we made an offer, and it worked out, you know, perfectly. So again, this was an example of like somebody that was really close to him. Deal came across his plate. He remembered us, you know, because you know he works for our company. I can guarantee if he didn't work for our company, he wouldn't have thought about us, which is why I built my brokerage to begin with, right? I wanted to make sure that 400 people, 400 agents would never forget about me, right? So um, one of the reasons we've we've grown our brokerage and I've pushed growing our brokerage. Okay. All right. So we're on to deal number seven. 68 Concord Road in Westford brought to us by an agent by the name of Jamie. Um, Jamie brought us this deal. Um, another interesting one. Okay. This is an interesting deal. So Jamie had somebody in his sphere of influence that was selling this property in Westford. He went out, made a listing presentation. 
Another agent went in right after him, made a listing presentation. The seller actually went with the other agent. The other agent is a very prominent agent, like does a ton of business in that area, and they chose them. <laughs> Ironically enough, he knows that agent, and that agent found out that you know that deal, the, the single family failed a septic inspection, needed a bunch of work, and long story short, that deal got back to Jamie. That prominent agent said, hey, does anybody know any investors who might want this deal? Okay, so Jamie brought that deal to us. So Jamie brought that deal to us. We ended up buying that property. So it's an interesting thing because this, this actually happens more than you would think. You know, a deal gets brought to an investor. At the end of the day, a lot of times the seller ends up working with who they have the best relationship with, right? So they ended up working with an agent that wasn't Jamie. They felt like that was the right relationship for them. But at the end of the day, the deal ended up coming full circle back to us anyways. So again, another win, 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 win. You know, that agent that took the listing got paid. Um, we bought the house. The seller got what they wanted and Jamie got a deal. Okay, Jamie's another agent. Um, recently joined our brokerage, but had been coming to our events for legitimately years. Um, I'm sure if I looked his name up in my database, I would probably see his name going back to probably 2016, 2017, you know, pretty far, you know, back in, in time, right? So again, another like interesting way that somebody ended up getting a deal, okay? All right, next one I wanna talk about, I think we're on to number seven. Um, let me see, one, two, I wanna make sure I do 10, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. Okay, no, we're on to number nine. All right, um, 17 West Main Street in Avon, brought to us by Mikel Blanchard, agent at our company. Again, feel comfortable saying his name because he's in house. Um, he, he joined our brokerage, wanted to do more investing, um, is a successful, active, full time agent, um, and came across this deal. In, uh, in Avon, uh, two family property, nice property. We went out, we made an offer. Um, we went on the appointment with him. Long story short, we found out that the, that the seller actually owed more money than what we could pay. So we ended up listing the house. This house needed a ton of work. Um, Mikel ended up listing the house. I should say that if an agent refers us a deal, and it becomes a listing. Of course, it's that agent's listing. I should just, you know, mention that. Um, you know, we only work together. We only split profits if, uh, if, if it becomes a flip deal. But we ended up listing this property, and buyers backed out. I think I can't remember if one set of buyers backed out or two sets of buyers backed out. But they backed out because the property just needed a ton of work. So, within the listing process. We got a better feel for what we believe that the property could sell for. And we actually felt like that we made a mistake on the ARV of what the property resale would be. Long story short, we ended up buying the property uh, for what the seller owed. So we ended up offering more than what we originally thought. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes we miscalculate what we think the property is going to sell for. Again, this is somebody who started coming to our events, they joined our brokerage, they came across a deal through their sphere, and now we're gonna split the profits 50-50. <clears throat> and the last one, another really good one, posted about this the other day, John Henry Davis, another agent that joined our brokerage. So actually, before I even say that, um, you're noticing a pattern here. Um, we will do deals, we will do deals with agents at any brokerage. Uh, we don't discriminate. Um, but what you know you might be noticing now is that two thirds of the deals we do are with agents that are at our brokerage. I mentioned why I think that happens, but it bears repeating. You are the average of the five people that you're spending the most amount of time with. If you're at our brokerage, you're gonna hear me talk about investing a lot. What is that gonna do? It's gonna activate, we talked about earlier in this podcast, about how I now see white Honda Odyssey minivans, right? The reason I see it is because I see mine every day and then I recognize them. It's the same thing. 
you don't have to join our brokerage to partner with us. Um, we help plenty of people that are not at our brokerage. But if you are at our brokerage, it's going to activate that part of your brain that's like investing, 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 investing. That part of your brain is really easy to forget about because a lot of times if you're at another brokerage, if you're if you're not around other investors, you're not going to hear people talk about investing all the time. And a lot of, it's really easy to get wrapped up as an agent, working with your buyers, working with your sellers and having investing kind of fall by the wayside. So again, I, I'm mentioning this only to, to say, hey, like we will work with anybody at any brokerage. Um, we want to help agents. We want to help ourselves. But in a lot of cases, like the proof is in the pudding with these 10, you know, that, that two thirds of them are with our brokerage. So the last one, interestingly enough, and, and a lot of these are happening quickly after somebody joins our brokerage. But I did a Facebook post about this the other day. By the way, if you aren't following me on my personal account, Tommy Caffarella, T-O-M-M-Y, and then Caffarella, um, you might want to do so because that's where I post the most. Um, you know, If you don't want to see me posting every day, probably don't follow me because I do post every single day. I try to keep my podcasts and my events and my Facebook group like, you know, less frequent only because I know that sometimes it can get obnoxious if I'm posting all the time. But if you really like what I have to say, then you might want to follow me on Facebook. That's where I do all of my posting. But yeah, so last deal, uh, Ruskin deal in Hyde Park, Massachusetts. Was brought to us by John Henry Davis, somebody that joined our brokerage only a month ago. A month after they joined, they brought us this deal. We went out on the appointment. Another interesting kind of tidbit. So this was somebody that he knew from growing up, somebody close to his inner circle um, and somebody in his sphere of influence. And we had competition on this one. And I should say, in a lot of cases, we do have competition, even when we get an agent referral. But where it mattered in, in this one is that we were able to match the highest offer. Why were we able to match the highest offer? Because they wanted to actually work with John. So this was a deal. And again, where like people might say, well, you know, the, the, the partnership program sounds too good to be true. Well, maybe, but that's a deal we wouldn't have gotten. Like we, if we were that bitter, we would have lost to John or whoever John was working with. So somebody in John's, you know, sphere of influence, somebody that he, you know, knew from growing up, you know, living in, in, in that area. And, um, you know, it's just another great deal that we put under contract. It's going to have a nice profit and it's going to work for John and us in the end. So, I know that was a lot. You know, I, I gave 10 examples. They were the most recent 10 examples. I think the biggest takeaways as I'm kind of sitting here thinking about this is number one, know about the partner program. You know, know about the partner program. Ideally, get as close to us as possible, whether that means joining the inner circle. You can learn more about the inner circle by scheduling a call with me at www.agentinvestorinnercircle.com. And if you don't want to be in the inner circle and you don't want to join our brokerage or you don't want to, you know, get that close to us, fine. Come to our events. You know, we have one every single month. They're always free. You can go to our events and learn about them at www.agentinvestorevent.com. Listen to our podcast at www.agentinvestorpodcast.com. Um, I sincerely mean this, that I think the more that you're around us, the more that you're hearing my voice, other people in my company's voice, the more investing deals you're going to get, the more investing deals you're going to do. And, you know, I mentioned the profits, like they're averaging 80,000. In a year where transactions are down, you know, a decent amount, I mean, what would doing one deal a year do for you and your family? you know, making an extra $40,000, right? That's like four or five additional sales in a year. Um, it's, it's potentially a salary, right? If if maybe, you know, you, you're a two-income household, that could be somebody's salary that you're making just by, you know, keeping your eyes and your ears open and partnering with us. Um, 
So the, the key there is to get educated, keep your eyes and your ears open. Don't worry about like whether or not the deal is good. Anytime that you get an opportunity, pass it to me. I'm more than happy to talk you through it, to educate you through it. At the end of the day, um, we are trying as much as we can to do as many of these deals as we can to continue to build the partnership program. You know, we want, you know, it to be a win-win, you know, we want to make money. We want you to make money. Um, so plug into all of our resources as much as you can in order to do that. I love to see as many of you as possible at as many of our upcoming events as we can. Look, I know it's not always convenient to take time out of your day to drive to an event, but at the end of the day, the biggest breakthroughs I've ever had have been going to in-person events, right? There's a lot to be said. There's a lot more to be gained by meeting somebody in person, by talking to them in person, um, by activating that part of your brain. And the, the last thing I'm going to wrap up on on this is like, I talk to agents every single week. They tell me how much they want to invest. I, I always give the litmus testing. I always ask the question. I go, on a scale of one to 10, how important is it to you? And I almost never get anybody that tells me it's less than a seven out of 10. They tell me it's an eight, it's a nine, it's a 10 out of 10 that I'm going to invest. And yet at the first opportunity to take a step forward with investing, coming to one of our events, they tell me that I wish I had an event a little bit closer to them. They tell me that they wish the event was on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. They tell me that the, the, the timing doesn't work. If, if it's that important to you, if it's that important to you to invest, it needs to be your first priority. It's not about doing stuff when it's convenient. It's about making sure that you're doing it even when it's not convenient. And I really believe for everybody that's listening right now that the best thing that you can do to further your investing is to come to one of our events. Hands down would be the top priority. So if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I know you have an event coming up, but it's not convenient or it's not the right time or I wish it was a different day. Just, I don't know any other way to say this, but stop making excuses. Your excuses are hurting you, not me, right? I'm going to beg you to come to the event because I know it's what you need. But at the end of the day, if you don't come to the event, my life is going to be minimally impacted. Your life is going to be maximally impacted. So I really hope that anybody who's listening to this right now does look, go to www.agentinvestorevent.com and says, hey, you know what? Like I am going to come to the next event. I'm going to make it a priority. And I'm going to stop saying that I'm going to invest at some point in the future. And I'm going to start investing now. And by investing now, it doesn't mean that you're going to go out and you're going to do a deal tomorrow. But it means that you're going to take the next step towards getting educated on this stuff. That might mean driving two hours to the event. It might mean flying to the event. It might mean canceling something that you know isn't super, super important, but maybe it seems like it is in the beginning. But um, I'm going to wrap there. Thank you, everybody who joined me live. Thank you for everybody who's listening to the podcast after the event. Hope to see as many of you as possible in person as I can. And um, guys, sales will make you a living. Investing will make you wealthy. Sales, yeah, you can make 50, 100,000 a year. You can make 150 a year, but it's not going to make you wealthy. Start putting investing at the top of your priority list. Good luck to everybody. Hope to see you in person. Thank you.